Welcome to Upticks with Jake Falcon, founder and CEO of Falcon Wealth Advisors. In this podcast, we help high net worth individuals overcome financial complexities. We do this by enhancing financial literacy and discussing topics in a language free from industry jargon. Join us as we help explain exactly what having a solid financial plan means as Jake draws from years of experience in helping hundreds of individuals get financially organized and focused on their goals. We hope you find Uptix educational, entertaining, and shareable. Now, on to the show. Welcome back to the show. This is episode 234, Maximizing Your 401k. Corey, thank you for joining me back on the show. Hello, Jake. Thank you for having me. And thank you to all the listeners and viewers out there. Uh, extremely humbled. Our subscriber count continues to grow. So whether you're listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, or watching us on YouTube, thank you very much. Um, please like and share our comment. Um, Five-star ratings are much appreciated. Thumbs-ups are always appreciated. And I've been getting some good feedback lately from clients, Corey. So it's really uh, nice to hear that our content is reaching our audience, who we want to be hearing and watching it, and they're getting some value from it. So that's been a lot of fun. And I see you've got your Chiefs shirt on. So wow, what a Super Bowl. Uh, the city is going berserk. Uh, what a game. And didn't you call it right again? Didn't we, didn't we win by do we win by three again? We did. Correct. <laughs> maybe you need to be a bookie, Corey. Yeah, maybe. I don't think I'm going to quit my day job, but uh, I haven't been able to get the score right. So the over-under, that might be the challenge. Yeah, you know, but I don't know, man. If you can call the three points, I think you can do a side hustle. It's legal now in Kansas. That's true. So That's true. I don't know. I think you should call it Bittner's Bookie. bookie Bittner the Booker. Bookie or whatever it is. Bookie. <laughs> there you go. Bittner the Bookie. <laughs> There as a tongue twister. That is a tongue twister. But good twister. for you. What a game. Uh, and I understand you yes. watched it with your father-in-law, right, at, yes. at their house? Yep. And was everybody screaming at the end, or how was the how was the vibe? It was um, it was pretty intense, actually. My uh, brother, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law and their two kids were over also at my in-laws, uh, along with my wife and I. So the kids were excited. The adults were excited. Um, lots of emotion all over the place. Uh, when Mahomes got hurt and they were down by 10 points, none of us were feeling very good uh, going into halftime. So uh, towards the end, we were thrilled. But uh, it, it's funny, my my wife and even my mother-in-law, just watching those games almost get so intense where it's like, I'm just going to leave the room for a little bit because I don't want to watch <laughs> if something bad ends up happening. Yeah, yeah. Rachel and I were screaming at the team. It was pretty hostile in our house the first half. And then yeah. we, we calmed down. We enjoyed the halftime show. And then we got focused on the second half and really just enjoyed it. So what a great game. Uh, spring is in the air in Kansas City. So hopefully uh, I'll get out there and get to play some golf because I certainly, Corey, have worked hard uh, this winter. Uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, meeting with clients, going over financial plans, going over investment strategy and uh, signing up a lot of new clients. So it's been good. It's been really good, but I'm ready. Got my master's logo on today. I am ready for golf season. I think I'm, I think I'm ready to start getting after it. Excellent. It's uh, we're getting closer and closer to spring day by day. That's right. Every day, technically is one yep. day closer. Uh, okay, good. So for today though, we wanted to talk about maximizing your 401k. And if you're still currently employed, more than likely, you have some form of retirement plan offered to you. You've got a 401k, a 403b, a 457, a thrift savings plan. You have something out there. And sadly, and this isn't typically our client always, but sadly, most Americans have grossly underfunded their 401k core. And it's a real problem in America. And most people don't have an adequate amount saved for retirement. So this episode is not only for those people, but it's also for our clients that maybe have two or three million dollars in their 401k, but maybe they're not really fully maxing the benefit from it. And so you and I wanted to go over some helpful ideas today of ways that we help our clients make sure they're getting the most out of their 401k. And most advisors here, Corey, would start with how much you put in there, but I'm not going to start with that today. Today, I'm going to start with how that money is invested. Because again, like I mentioned here in the beginning, if you have a 401k already established, it is invested some in some way. And that's actually the number one problem that we see with new clients that come into Falcon Wealth Advisors 
is that we'll, we'll pop the hood and take a look at their 401k. And it is typically, not always, but typically it is largely misaligned with their financial plan. And so I encourage you, if you have a current 401k, you need to look at how it's invested, right? Because first it starts with the financial plan, which will dictate what you know, proper investment allocation your, your retirement assets should be. And then we want to line that up. But there's a lot of nuance in investing in a 401k. Um, you've got, you know, you typically have a menu of funds available that all typically have different objectives. They have different managers oftentimes. They have different fees associated with them. Uh, different past performance, which again is not any kind of future performance. Sometimes you have target date funds. Sometimes there's a brokerage link option. So there's a lot going on in these 401k plans. And I'm proud to introduce a new software technology that Falcon Wealth Advisors has invested in and our back office Hightower has vetted for us called Pontera. So Corey, why don't you go over exactly what Pontera can do for our clients? Yeah, we're really excited about this. Jake, you and I have had a lot of conversations with people uh, really at the beginning of the year talking about this and we'll continue to have those through the year. But Pontera, the software is a new offering that we've invested in that's available to us that allows us to manage, monitor, and trade directly inside client 401k plans on their behalf the same way or very similar to the way that we would manage money in for specific accounts that clients have opened that we're managing for them today. Right. It's really exciting, Corey. And thank you. So if you're a current client of Falcon Wealth Advisors, or if you're thinking about hiring us to help you, the old way about your 401k is either you would just either maybe not even have an advisor, you just go at it alone and pick some random funds or funds that you think are good and let it ride. And maybe you look at it once a year when open enrollment. I mean, how often are our clients really looking at their 401k? Not Some some of them look at it a lot, but a lot of people don't because they're busy. They have careers and they have families and they have other things going on. So you, you just set it up yourself and kind of go blind there a little bit because, you're, again, you're not trained to do this. You're not a financial advisor. You're you know, a corporate executive or you're in IT or you're, you know, whatever. Um, or the old way we used to try to help clients, which wasn't very, it was okay. But it, again, I think this Pontera technology is going to allow us to do a much better job is that we would say, okay, based on your menu of funds, this is what normally would line up with what we are doing here with your money. But then again, we're not actively monitoring it. We're not putting the trades on for you. And it's up to you to monitor make the trades, rebalance. If something changes, you have to let us know. And then, you know, so there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of phone calls with the 401k provider. You have to get online. Maybe you forgot your password, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you don't put the trade in right. There's a lot that can get disconnected in that way of advisement, frankly. And so what Pontera does, like you said, Corey, is we literally can link in through technology. You, nothing changes with your password or your login or anything. But then you, get, you grant us access to go in there and literally do the research on your funds, make the trades, monitor it, most importantly, um, and make sure that your 401k is properly invested according to your financial plan. Now, this isn't free, though, right? So again, the old way, you either kind of did it on your own or... Um, you know, we would give you some some advice like, hey, these are your funds. This is what you should do. Now it's up to you to go do it on your own. So we do charge for it now. So Corey, what would you say to a client that says, well, Corey, you've been doing this for me for free. Why would I pay you now? Um, because, hey, you know, I've got, you know, 500,000 in my 401k. I don't really want to pay you to do it. You were doing this for free. Why would I pay you now? What do you say to that question? It's a, it's a valid question. Yeah, absolutely. What I would explain is that this is a completely different service offering. Um, what we were doing previously, the, the reality is that we were doing the best that we could with the information that we had and within the constraints that existed. Uh, this type of software, this Pontera, Jake, that you and I are talking about, this is something that we've actually had clients that have been clamoring for years for us to be able to do just this. So the first point I would make, though, is that this is a different service offering. It's something that allows us to actually transact and make the trades in the accounts. We have the ability to monitor them and to effectively go in and make changes when they need to be made the same way we would on any other accounts. We did not have that previously. Right. It's a good point. Just like we wouldn't say, go buy these stocks right. at, you know, um, wherever, E-Trade or whatever, right? 
we say, no, if, if we want to buy the stocks, we're going to open an account and buy them for you here. That's the same thing now. It's like, yes, we have to, you know, confide within the limitations of your 401k, but as fiduciaries, we want to monitor, manage, rebalance. Uh, maybe you have a fund change. Uh, maybe a fund is unper underperforming and we need to fire it and go into another one. We can manage all that now. And like you said, we did the best we could with what we had available, but technology is fast, fastly changing in financial services. And I'm real excited that, again, our back office was able to get this vetted and approved for us and that we're able to do it for our clients in a, in a good environment where we feel confident with the technology and we're able to execute as fiduciaries. Also, the, the legislation and the laws around fiduciaries are changing and that, you know, and, and for right, you know, for rightful reasons is that the SEC and FINRA, they don't want advisors advising on assets that they can't fully monitor. Right. So, again, as fiduciaries, we want to monitor, manage and, and be able to con control this somewhat for our clients. Um, so that's what's really exciting. So, again, that's very important. So, again, you could have three million dollars in your 401k, Corey, but if it is not aligned with your financial plan, in my opinion, that's even more risky than if you have less than that that's invested correctly. Because again, you could have three million, it's all under diversified or over diversified or not properly allocated. So you could lose a lot of money or not make enough. So again, it's very important to have that allocation correct. And I think it's just as important to have someone manage and monitor that. And that's what we're able to do for our clients at Falcon Wealth Advisors. And our rate is the same. So whatever your rate is that you pay for an account, here with us directly, it'll just be the same right there at the 401k because basically we're going to manage it, you know, just within the 401k, which is really exciting. Now we can't bill the 401k. That goes into the little details a little bit, but you know, you would just set up a brokerage. We would bill that here, and it basically would function in a very similar manner. It's really exciting yeah. getting those assets lined up. Yeah, it really is. And I just wanted to point out a few other quick things around that, though, Jake, while we're talking about it. I, I do think that one thing that we have visibility into, of course, now uh, using the software for clients is something called asset location, which we've talked about on the show before, making sure that the right types of assets are owned in the right types of accounts. The client has after-tax funds, pre-tax funds, and Roth funds inside of their 401k plan, owning the right funds or the right types of investments inside each of those different um, parts of the 401k is really important. Uh, and that's something, of course, that we have visibility into. If there are changes into the 401k plan or the investment offerings that are out there year to year, I know a lot of clients have seen those before where you know a handful of um, funds available have changed. We're notified and we're able to see and evaluate those changes that are occurring. And lastly, I think the fact of the matter is just the, uh, you know, th there's very much a convenience factor involved too. I don't know how many times you know, I've talked to clients over the years about this and, you know, they've tried to pull the menu of funds, send them to us in an email. We've given them some allocations. They only change their future contributions and they don't reallocate the dollars that are already in there. All those types of things have happened. Um, and I don't know how many times, Jake, you've probably had it happen a lot. I'll sit down with a client when we're meeting for a regular review, ask them what the value of their 401k plan is or how it's invested and they don't know. We have visibility directly into that with the software. It allows us to keep the financial plans updated in real time and frankly, uh, allows us to be able to do our jobs that our clients have hired us to do without having to ask our clients to do so much manual work in order for us to execute. Right. Good point, Corey. And you made me think of another thought is that also, since we'll be directly managing it for the clients that elect to do this, the performance will also feed right into our performance with us. So we'll be able to say... Because a lot of times clients, they don't even know how their 401k is performing. And I blame the 401k providers. They just show like a year to date or whatever. They don't, they can't slice and dice the, the data like we can at Falcon Wealth Advisors. So we can say in 2022, this is what your 401k did. This is what your accounts here did. And overall, this is what it did. We'll have all that information because we're managing it. Um, so again, it's just, in my opinion, it's going to be far better for the client. And that's all that really matters here. We want to get all those assets working together and invest it appropriately that line up with your financial plan. It's very important because again, just putting money in a 401k is not good enough. You've got to make sure that the investments are being managed and monitored correctly. And most 401ks don't do that. And again, they do do it sometimes, but then again, you've got to pay some random person that doesn't even have a financial plan for you. So I'll get into that here in a moment. So let's go into our second point though. It's a good segue into that is that, yes, you definitely want to contribute. And the no brainer here is if your company has any type of match, whether it's 1% or 6%, you need to put in the, at a minimum, whatever that match is, right? That, that is a no brainer, that is table stakes. 
frankly, some people will argue, especially the younger clients, I can't afford to do that. You can't not afford to do that, frankly. Uh, you've got to do that. That's you know theoretically free money. Uh, it's a benefit, a perk of working hard at your corporation. So you definitely want to take advantage of any matching contribution they can do. But it doesn't stop there. Like sometimes, Corey, people will say, they'll, let's say they make uh, $100,000 a year and they've got to put in 6% to get the 3% match. Well, they say, well, they'll tell us, well, I'm maxing it out. And I'll say, okay, what does that mean? How much are you putting in there? Well, I'm putting in 6%. Well, that means they're only putting in $6,000 technically, right, Corey? Um, to get their $3,000 match, but that's not maxing it out. Corey, what is the max somebody can put in their 401k from their own dollars for 2023? It's $22,500 for someone who's under the age of 50, and it's $30,000 for someone 50 or older. Right. So that would be truly maxing out their 401k, not the six grand, right? Now, again, if you make $100,000 and you're in your 50s, maybe you can't afford to put $30,000 in. I get it. Uh, however, if you can't afford to put seven, eight, nine, ten percent in, that's a way to start leading into maxing your 401k. So don't think that you're maxing it just because you're putting in enough to get the max match. That's not maxing your 401k. Again, if you're 50 or older, you can put 30 grand a year of your own dollars in there. If you've got that wiggle room and you've got that cash flow, you should definitely be working towards putting the max allowable amount in there. Um, so that's very important. And you talked a little bit about asset location. So again, also something that we review with our clients literally every year, should you put it in pre-tax? Should you use a Roth? Does your company allow for an after-tax? Um, we can't answer that on this show because every single year for every client, their tax situation will change. But that's something that our financial planners on our team will have a conversation with you about saying, okay, your projected income is this year. This is going to put you in this bracket. Theoretically, this year, a Roth makes sense for you, or this year, pre-tax makes sense for you. But it's literally a conversation you need to have every year. Um, it's not just so generic that you can just set it and forget it and not think about it. Literally, you should be having a conversation with uh, your team here at Falcon Wealth Advisors every year, whether you do the pre-tax or Roth or after-tax in there. Good. So that the con contributions are important. And again, that's been a little bit easier for us to give guidance on over the years. But like you mentioned, Corey, now we can look at where the money is and how it's invested which in, within each one of those pools, which can, again, maximize that 401k that much more. Very good. What's our third topic we wanted to talk about on maximizing your 401k, Corey? Fees, 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 fees. <laughs> fees. Yeah, you got to love it. So again, 401ks are not free. A lot of people will think that. I think it's a big misconception, Corey, is they'll say, well, I don't pay for it. My employer does. No, that's not how it works. Um, typically, there's a nominal admin fee, which good for legislation. I think in recent years, Corey, they've actually forced 401ks to start printing that on your statement quarterly. But that's not the only fee you pay. Typically, the investment companies or the mutual funds will also have hidden internal fees that they charge. And that typically can only be found through the prospectus, which again... If you don't want to read through all of them, I get it. We will do that for you. So we will we will look at all of the internal fees and make sure that we're getting the most bang for our buck. Again, at Falcon Wealth Advisors, we don't like to use products at all. Um, but if in your 401k, that's all you have available, we'll do with the best with what you have available and allocate it appropriately. Now, again, when we can roll it over and, and get out of that situation, we will. But again, while you're working, they typically don't allow for that. So you want to be mindful that it's not free. You want to know what are you paying? So typically there'll be a, a very small admin fee. Uh, there'll be investment management fees hidden within the, the funds themselves. And then sometimes these 401ks, which I don't particularly like, Corey, they'll still they'll have an advisor, quote unquote, charging an advisor fee also that you may not ever even meet with this person. Um, or it's some sort of robo advisor that, you know, they're they're tacking on some sort of robo allocation. But my problem with these other advisor fees is that if they're not meeting with you as fiduciaries and they don't have a full financial plan like we do for our clients, how much advice can they really give you on their 401k? So again, if you if you have an option to hire some sort of robo advisor uh, and, and you're working with us, I, we don't think you should do that at all. You, you should let us do it for you because that's why you hired us. You'd be basically paying two advisors then. Um, if you're doing it on your own, maybe, but then again, like I said, these people don't know you, there's no full financial plan. So how can they really, why are they really charging for advice on this 401k 
Corey, do you have any thoughts on the fees before we move to the next one? Yeah, I think just the, the way that I look at it and think about it is just as you described, Jake, it's not free. There is going to be a cost. The matter, the, the, the question is, would you rather see what the cost is or not see what the cost is, right? I mean, that's, which I think the answer probably for most people is pretty obvious. Um, but I think that's really what it boils down to. Yeah, and you have to be careful because again, one fund may be charging you 1% and one fund may be charging you 0.1%. However, if that fund that's charging you 1% is outperforming by more than their fee, then actually it might be worth it. So again, you don't want to be what's called a penny wise and dollar dumb. Right. So don't just think fees are the only driver, but that's what we do for you at Falcon Wealth Advisors. We'll weigh all of that. We'll take a look at all of the fees. Uh, what is the performance? You know, how is the portfolio constructed uh, to make sure that you're getting the most out of your 401k? And again, there are no guarantees, obviously, when you're dealing with investments. However, if again, you don't want to just go, OK, Jake, I want to go all the cheapest funds because they may be crappy. Right. So right. Uh, you got to be careful with that also. So fees aren't the only driver. But like you said, Corey, transparency is very important. Uh, we can break it all out. Pontera is awesome. And the fact that it'll it'll run this analysis for us so we can see all these fees. We can do the research for you uh, and then we can break it out. It's like, hey, this fund's going to charge you, you know, half a percent. But you know what? It's beating all the other funds. And we think it makes really sense for this piece of, of your portfolio because of that. We can go over all of that with you and help you do it. And then, of course, if you have a brokerage link, we'd love to do the individual stocks. Like that, that's uh, obviously our preference when, when that's available to you. Yep. And I think good. And then my last piece that I wanted to bring in here, Corey, is there's some advanced strategies, right? So there's this thing called a mega backdoor Roth IRA. And basically, if you go up to that $30,000 limit, if you're in your 50s, sometimes 401ks will allow you to put even more money in there. Um, and then you can put it in after tax and then convert it to a Roth. So that's an advanced strategy. Corey, why don't you talk about the rule of 55? It's another advanced strategy that we look to take advantage of for our clients. Yeah, the rule of 55 really involves someone retiring in the year that they turn 55 years or older, but presumably not yet 59 and a half. Funds that they leave, money that they leave inside their 401k plan with the employer they separated from at age 50, you know, in the year they turn 55 or older, those funds are accessible, um, penalty free. So there's still income tax if they're pre-tax funds that you're pulling out of the account but you do not have to pay the 10% penalty associated with those distributions. So it's great, yeah, now for a client, Corey, because before, if a client retired at 55, we would leave the money in the 401k so they could access it without a penalty, but it was still kind of out there floating. Like sometimes it would make me nervous, believe it or not, because I, I'm like, I hope their 401k is doing okay because they're living off this money, but I'm not yep. monitoring it because it's not here, right? Where if we have a client that's 60 and they're retired and they're pulling, I have a lot more confidence because we have full transparency and access and we're managing that money. So now, good news is for a client, if you're 55 and you retire, we can manage that 401k while we leave it there until you're age 59 and a half. So again, there's some more advanced strategies that we can continue to take advantage of, but the idea is that we're going to be more involved in helping you get the max out of your 401k. And that's obviously... Um, the whole idea, it's a huge benefit and perk uh, of working at a company. And you definitely just don't want to put money in there and have a blind eye to it. Like I said, Corey, because it's very important um, that you're getting the most out of it. So the investments, how you're contributing, how much you're contributing, what fees you're paying, and are you eligible or do you have any of these advanced strategies as an opportunity to go that much further in your 401k? Good. Is there any parting comments as we wrap up today's show? One last one for me to make here, Jake. And this is uh, really around the contribution limits. We talked earlier about the pre-tax and the Roth limits and everything else that's involved. But the IRS, along with that, also publishes a total maximum dollar amount that can be contributed to someone's 401k plan between their own contributions and their employer's contributions or the match piece that you highlighted. And this varies from plan to plan, from company to company, but there's a specific number that's published by the IRS, and it's actually $66,000 for 2023. So let me just give a quick, simple example here, Jake, sure. because I think it'll be helpful to kind of talk through. Let's imagine someone's 53 years old. They contribute the full $30,000 that they're eligible to contribute, either pre-tax or Roth. Let's say their company contributes $9,000. It's making up a number here. 39000 total between the employee and their employer has gone into that 401k plan. If the plan allows for it, 
they could contribute in addition, the employee could contribute an additional $27,000 after taxes to that 401k plan, all the way up to that limit of 66,000. Right. And, and that's back to make convert that to a Roth. Roth. Yeah, you yeah. can potentially, yeah, exactly. Exact. So that's an advanced strategy, but that's a good point, Corey. So if you're putting in 30,000, you might be able to put in more. And again, every company's 401k plan is written a little differently. And we're happy to find those answers out with you. Um, but you, a lot of times people don't understand that. So they think they're maxing it by just getting the match. They think they're maxing it by just putting in the 30. You can go further than that. That's a good point, Corey. And, and again, if you have the cushion and the availability, this is you should do it, right? And like we talked about in a previous episode of Upticks, saving just to save is not a bad idea, right? So because um, more times than not, you know, you have extra money in retirement that will allow for some extra flexibility and things. And that's typically a good thing for our clients. Yep. Good. So again, if you're interested in Pontera, don't mm -hmm. wait on it. Sim simply email. If you work directly with me and my group, email me at jake at falconwealthadvisors.com. I'll send you my schedule link. We'll have a 15 minute phone call about some of the logistics and how it'll be set up for you specifically. Corey, you simply email Corey at C-O-R-Y at falconwealthadvisors.com. He'll do the same thing with his client group. Um, but we've been busy. We've been busy signing up a lot of clients to do this um, because again, now we're taking care of their whole picture and we're able to monitor it and manage it that much more than we were before. All right, Corey, so to wrap up our show, now that football season is done, what are, you can't have a better football season. Are you a college basketball guy? Are you just going to, are you a hockey guy? Are you waiting around for baseball? What do you got going on next sports-wise? For me, it's really probably the March Madness, the tournament. Um, but admittedly, I'm not I'm not a big college basketball fan. I don't watch too many of the games throughout the season, but always enjoy the tournament. What about you? What about yeah, golf? Yeah, same. Same. There's Einstein. He's got looking at a squirrel or something. But um, uh, he's excited for something. But uh, I March Madness, you know, my wife went to KU, so uh, that's fun cheering them on. I just, I mean, she always roots for the upset, so it's always fun. Rachel will, will always take the underdog, I feel like. Um, so that's always fun to watch with her. Uh, and then golf seasons here for me. I mean, um, some big tournaments are, are coming through on the PGA Tour, so those are fun to follow and watch. Um, so really, I'm I'm actually into golf season now more than anything else, probably for most of the year. I don't watch. I like watching the Royals when they start, but if they start losing, I lose interest quickly. Um, so hopefully, they have a good year. We'll all see. right, and that's all the time. That's all the time we have for today. So again, thank you again for Corey for joining me. Thank you all for tuning in. And, and as always, we hope you have a great week. Thank you for listening to Upticks. Click the subscribe button to be notified when new episodes become available. Also, be sure to visit our website, falconwealthadvisors.com, and click the Contact Us button if you'd like to meet with Jake and his team.